<coughs> so I apologize. That's a picture of Herr Doctor Alzheimer's. Epidemiology of uh, Alzheimer's disease, it's astonishing at the number of people that are developing Alzheimer's disease. And when we look at the financial cost and the family cost, and look at the medicines that are available, I'm in shock that what we're doing really does nothing for the underlying causation. The causation of Alzheimer's disease, most of us are being told, or those of us who read a little bit more into it, uh, realize that it's not the uh, genetic predisposition for it. In fact, there's only a oh, wrong button for it. In fact, there's only 55% of the cases, well, 55% of the cases have no genetic relationship. So there has to be some other causation for it, whether or not it's environmental toxins or some of the great medications like statins that we give that create apoptosis in the brain, or the failure to replenish hormones or trace elements that are naturally or normally needed for optimal function and defense of the brain. Ron told you about allopregnenolone, also progesterone, there's a whole litany of hormones that have been found to be beneficial and protective against things like Alzheimer's disease. Clinical course, as I'm witnessing right now, <clears throat> is very accelerated, can be very accelerated or very slow. In um, previous uh, research where they talked about hormone replacement therapy uh, causing acceleration in Alzheimer's disease is because the progestins, the 17-medroxy progesterone, causes inflammation. And that's why in the studies that you read where it says HRT accelerates or increases uh, Alzheimer's disease, it's because of that one hormonal variation. All progesterones are not progesterone. The progestins are dangerous. There are a lot of players in the game of Alzheimer's. It's not just <clears throat> beta amyloid. And it's not just having a predilection based upon a genetic coding. But there are a number of other components, players, that can be modified and regulated through adequate hormonal replacement, and that's really what I'm going to share with you. It's all simple. Doesn't that look simple? APOE is in a membrane protein involved in cholesterol transport. You've seen the articles about uh, LDL being high, creating a problem. And it's based upon the alleles, and, but that's only in 45% of the cases. In 55% of the cases, there's no relationship to a genetic predisposition. And <clears throat> there's no family history of AD. The epidemiological um, actuary lifetime risk of uh, Alzheimer's disease is 15%. Uh, if there's one allele, it's 29. Uh, lifetime risk with no APO4s is 9%. And again, the question of screening is isolated population. Going after APO, you know, you're only going to be testing or be able to get 45% of them. Let's get through that. Amyloid precursor protein is a glycoprotein, which is a very large um, chemical structure, where it gets cleaved off 39 to 42 amino acids, which represents the beta amyloid. And what happens is the... Um, proteoglycan or the APP uh, attaches as you're sh seeing. I don't have a pointer, but you can go from the top left. Outside the cell, part of it goes through, then it gets cleaved by beta amyloid uh, um, enzyme. And that's what leads to the production and accumulation of beta amyloid. It's a little closer. And then you get these clumpings, beta amyloid plaque, which leads to inflammation. There's a Sorel-1, which is um, involved in the intracellular trafficking of amyloid, and it tends to bring it together to uh, accumulate it, which leads to the condensation and the formation of inflammatory complex. In influence of Sorel gene variant um, CFF, uh, CSF, beta amyloid production is uh, improbable Alzheimer's disease. They're looking at this enzyme as being when it's too high or too low, influencing the occurrence of the precipitation of the beta amyloid particles as a precipitating factor for Alzheimer's. I'm giving you pieces. 
The recycling of amyloid uh, precursor protein uh, from the cell surface seems to be regulated by the Sorel. Beta amyloid has always been perceived as being the causation for Alzheimer's disease. But what we're finding is that there's another aspect to it in tau protein. Tau protein is responsible for maintaining the integrity of the microtubules, which are the tubules that help to transport from the, the neuron cell body down to the axiom for the communication. And when the um, precipitation of the beta amyloid occurs, the inflammation leads to destruction of the tau protein and dissemination or separation of the molecules that make up the microtubules, leading to impairment of the ability for axonal transportation of the uh, neurotransmitters. So the cell body, tau stabilization of the microtubules, and then destruction of the integrity of it, and then loss of communication between the cell body and the axon for transmission of the, or transportation of the um, neurotransmitter. There's a nicer picture of it. There's a closer one. Those are tangles. And those tangles um, are byproducts of the tau protein. Neprilysin, essentially neprilysin to work, to be protective against Alzheimer's disease uses zinc at its core. And if you're zinc deficient, these things will not work effectively, as with the case with P53, which is the strongest anti-cancer product in our, nuclear, in our nucleus, which helps to defend us against DNA um, mutation. When virus is injected into our cells, that mutation, zinc being there, zinc being part of the P53, helps to initiate apoptosis and therefore the destruction of the cell so that there's not propagation of the virus. And that's how zinc helps with um, stopping viral infections.